Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Schalke will take his punishment. McCann confident Dundee can escape the drop. And Morris Malpass rejoins Inverness to help Richie Foran. Yeah, just a few of the talking points. Alan Ruff and myself, Peter Martin, will be discussing in the company of a former Rangers player, Ali Dawson, now working with Street Soccer. And we are delighted to welcome Ali on the programme as ever. Um, we had a great time in the summer with you, Ali, for the Homeless World Cup. It was, it was just a wonderful time to be in Glasgow City Centre. It was, it was terrific and the feedback uh, from everybody was uh, how successful it was. Uh, didn't realise it was an, an annual event to a lot of people but uh, yes, it uh, ha happens every year uh, and Glasgow took it into its arms and, and really embraced it uh, along with uh, you guys as well. It was fantastic. Yeah, thoroughly <coughs> enjoyed it. We're going to talk more about uh, this season's event and uh, how you might actually get involved in it. Uh, we'll get the details of Ali very shortly. Uh, some news to talk about, obviously concerning <coughs> Scottish football. Let's have a look at the papers from the uh, back pages this morning. The uh, record, first of all, focuses on Neil McCann. It was uh, a late press conference last night. Uh, he was uh, unveiled as the new manager of Dundee on an interim basis. Five games, possibly seven uh, for Dundee. Um, over and above that, uh, the Sun uh, has this headline uh, concentrating on Neil McCann and, of course, Jason Cummings, which I think is a, a viral video sensation uh, wrestling there uh, with a Scottish wrestler. It really was the most outrageous video to watch. And uh, the Daily Mail uh, concentrates on, uh, of course, not only Neil McCann, but Ronaldo there as Real Madrid march into the semi-finals yet again uh, with a win over Bayern Munich. Uh, like it or not, we'll get Ruffy's thoughts on it. Uh, he's not too happy with the uh, Madrid Giants, so we'll get his thoughts on tonight's ties as well. Um, first to the dive, which has caused a fair bit of consternation. Uh, well, we're waiting to hear what the Ross County boss Jim McIntyre was going to make of it all. Uh, this is, of course, Alex Schalk waiting on his punishment uh, for the uh, dive against Celtic, which earned Ross County a 2-2 draw. This is what the county manager had to say about it. Alex was in the wrong. You know, there was no contact. He's, he's came and apologised to me personally. He's very upset about it because he's never been involved in an incident like this before. He's never been booked for a uh, simulation before, so... He's, uh, he was quite distraught actually when he, he viewed the footage back and it doesn't look good. We as a club will take that punishment on the chin and Alex is, and I have had a conversation and, and he knows it's unacceptable and it won't happen again. OK, it's uh, one of those things that happens in football. Players will play for the penalty. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes the referee gets it woefully wrong. Uh, Ruffy's an advocate of handing out a really harsh ban, Ali. Are you into six games as a punishment? It probably will uh, would help to stop it here, um, but when you go, you get teams going into European ties, etc., and that becomes second nature to a lot of the players. Um, it, it, it sometimes is as if you're going in with your hands tied behind your back. Um, we sort it out at home, or do you take it into European ties and 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 try and adjust it? I probably similar to to Ruffy, but I, I still think that when clubs do go in there. Um, they'll try to make the referee make the decision um, and most of the times uh, there is simulation that you see. Um, the referees tend to get most of them right but they're woefully wrong at the weekend unfortunately. Yeah and, and of <coughs> course Jim McIntyre acknowledges that this uh, could indeed um, tarnish his reputation. His reputation will be tarnished but as I say you know he's never been involved in any incident like this before or booked for simulation so from our point of view, you know, it's, it's we know that Alex will be getting looked at. You know that he's done this before, but it, it's it's up to Alex to make sure that he's not involved in any any other scenarios. Well, more often than not, Rafi, we can only deal in the here and now. The one thing about social media, it, there's a great word in in football now, what about uh, which is basically, yes, never mind this one, what about that other mm -hmm. one? I mean, it doesn't take away from the fact that the most immediate one is Alex Schalke. 
um, and you have to deal with that. As each one goes <clears> past, though, once it gets to a critical end of the season, suddenly these results can become critical at the bottom end. Someone might look mm. back on that point that County have. Yeah, they, they probably will do. But for me, the, the best thing, the whole thing that's come out is the honesty for Jim McIntyre. I think right for the start when it happened, you could see the dialogue he was having with Brendan Rodgers, and right away he was, obviously, as we all saw, but he didn't try to fudge it, he didn't try to, like go round about it, you know, he was honest, he was up front, he'll have a word with the player, and it's good that the clubs are dealing with it immediately, you know, but unfortunately for the boy, like the wee boy Jamie Walker, for a, a wee while he will be tarnished, and every time he's in the box, every time he goes near the ball, every time he's <coughs> getting challenged, but uh, fortunately I thought I, th I thought he was wanting to go back down and play in England anyway, so that might be his get out. Yeah, OK. Um, I'm not quite sure <laughs> running away is the perfect get-out, but I'll, I'll try and work out your logic as the, the programme continues. Let's switch our attention to a man who maybe caught a few of us by surprise late last night. Dundee unveiled their interim manager. They were quick to appoint uh, the uh, Sky pundit Neil McCann, the former uh, Rangers, Hearts and Dundee player. He's back to his old stomping ground with a fair bit of confidence that his players can get him out of this position. The only thing that matters is when you cross the line. And the guys have been close on a number of occasions, not been able to get that win. But all it takes is one to fall and the confidence will rise. The squad will start to take maybe a few more risks that maybe they've just not been taken. Because I know what it's like when you lack confidence. You don't take the risky pass. You don't take the killer pass. You're maybe not prepared to take it in a tight situation just because you're lacking a wee bit of confidence. So it's my job now until the end of the season to try and extract that confidence out, bring it out to the fore, and hopefully that will be enough to get us the points and, as I said, to, to get us away. Well, he's under no illusions, Neil. He's a strong-willed character. Um, he'll live or die by his results. He will, um, and the way he was talking there as well, I think he's, he's, he realises that it can take one or two results, one or two little bits uh, just to change things, and I think that's what he's, he's looking for. I think he knows that the, he obviously knows the game, but he knows himself from his past experiences that confidence is a big thing. Uh, a team down at the bottom of the league is going to find it very, very difficult to gain that confidence. So. Hopefully the, the change, the club's looking and saying, thinking the change can make, make the difference. Yeah, well, um, he's under no illusions um, about the job he faces, but of course uh, he may be a little surprised that Dundee actually find themselves at the bottom end of the league. Well, I'm surprised at the position they're in because you do look at the squad. I know there has been investment within uh, the team. I think Paul has been backed. I think he would be the first to say that. Paul will be disappointed where the club are. There's no doubt of that. And that's without stating the obvious. I think the players will be disappointed. But equally so, you can you can say that about the other sides who are in fighting around that. I'm not going to disrespect them and say we are we are much better than them because they'll be saying, saying the same thing. But it's up to me and it's up to the players and it's up to the staff to pull together to make sure that we prove that we shouldn't be in that position. Well, Ruffy, in the cold light of day, he was paid to talk a good game. Now he's paid to deliver a good game. Yeah, and uh, as Ali said there, the first place he'll have to work his magic is in the dressing room. Uh, there will be a lot of heads down there. I think the, they were on that slide for the Aberdeen game, the 7 nothing. It doesn't matter what team you're in to, to recover for a 7 nothing hammer takes a wee, a wee while, so yeah, I have to go in. But he'll know that the bottom six uh, that are there now, they're all... They're all beatable, you know, and that's what he'll be, what he'll be looking at. And they're, they're, they're now in a level now where they've probably played these teams throughout the season and played particularly well against them or maybe never get a wee break. So he's just hoping that they can turn it around. Yep, and of course he, he leaves behind, although for how long we do not know, um, a, a lucrative job at Sky Sports to take on this manager's job at Dundee. And I think Neil's the first to admit it is a risk. It's maybe a big risk for uh, for the club because a lot of guys will think because I've not been in a job before. Um, but I appreciate the opportunity. I'm not going into anything lightly. I've been doing the job with Sky now for a number of years, as everybody knows in here. I think most people know the type of person I am, um, the type of character, the standards that I like to have when I was playing and training and certainly through my Sky job, the standards that I've tried to, to keep up. So those qualities I would like to think I'll bring to the football club. 
Are you surprised he's taken this uh, job, Ruffy? No, I think he's been trying to get into the, the, the game. I think he has. You know, obviously there are certain clubs you want to go and he's got uh, uh, something with Dundee, you know, from when obviously when he played a couple of times. And obviously he feels as if this could be a time to get back into management. You've got to start somewhere and he's fortunate enough he's getting a, a Premier Club to start with. Yep, uh, OK. We wish Neil McCann the very best of luck. And we thought we'd give you a wee Neil McCann question as well in the break. Yeah, there's Neil McCann, 1998. Did you remember that, Ruffy? <clears throat> uh, no, I didn't. Uh, obviously, I didn't uh, come up against him at that year. I'd, I'd retired by then. But, uh, yeah, I think he's had any club he's went to. He's been a very good player with him. Yep, absolutely. Um, and, of course, just in case you've forgotten, our boot room guest is former Rangers player Ali Dawson, now working with Street Soccer. We're going to talk uh, Homeless World Cup shortly. Um, Ali also is one of those rare guests on the programme that hasn't scored a goal past Ruffy, which is rare indeed. <laughs> it's very unusual, yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, Let's put things in perspective. He's a fullback. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, nevertheless, um, just at the top of the programme, of course, we mentioned uh, the main news headline, which was uh, Alex Schalke and uh, Jim McIntyre talking about the dive uh, that earned Ross County a 2-2 draw. And um, no surprise, he's accepted his two-game ban that was offered to him um, and County still keep the point, Ruffy. <laughs> so there you are, everybody's yeah. happy. Yeah, I'm sure when it gets to the end of the season, I think we're all hoping that it's not a point that's going to be, you know, send somebody down because uh, that we wouldn't want to remember that. Yeah, and what do you make of uh, Scott Brown, uh, Ruffy? Um, he has appealed against uh, the, the red cards shown to him uh, for the tackle on Liam Boyce and I think uh, that means now that uh, the the case will be heard on the 27th of April so he's available mm -hmm. for the semi-final is that a bit of uh, working the system yeah I think it is yeah uh, it is and uh, if he gets off fair enough but if he doesn't you know and, uh, and found to be guilty then I, I feel again I think he's, he's wasting everybody's time if he's found guilty and he probably will get an additional game yeah uh, an additional game or two yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's be blunt about it. I think he is working the system. It's a stonewall red card, Ruffy. Yeah, but I think even Brendan Rodgers came out after the game and, and, and said it was a bit rash and late and everything. But I think we all saw it. Uh, the referee was in a good position. So I would like to know what his defence is, you know, and obviously... Uh, in this day and age, we don't really find that out. But uh, he'll go up there, and uh, I think we all know that it's the reason is to play in the Rangers game. OK. Um, Ali, do you wish you were rolling back the years for the semi-finals at the weekend? Aberdeen, Hibs, and, of course, Celtic against Rangers. It would be nice. It would be very, very nice. But uh, I've had my time, and uh, uh, hopefully it will be a... It will be a game remembered for what happens on the pitch in the right way. Um, hopefully, the, the two games will be that as well. So, um, but you know, it's just I've had my time. That's it. Yeah, a lot has changed um, between the last semi-final Rangers and Celtic uh, came together. That was, of course, uh, when Ronnie Dyla was the Celtic manager, mm -hmm. and of course Mark Warburton was able to celebrate eventually a penalty shootout win. But how do you see the two sides shaping up this time? Um, shaping up probably both teams are are going in with a bit of confidence uh, Rangers have obviously uh, more recently changed the manager and uh, getting results and playing reasonably well changed this, things a little bit differently as well and probably more direct um, but still a little bit suspect at the back and uh, more likely to worry about that uh, when they come up against a team like Celtic and Celtic will look at it and maybe with a little bit in their mind it's a semi-final and and uh, they, they, they didn't win the last one so Rangers will uh, go in hopefully with a bit of confidence and uh, Celtic will be just have that little bit of wariness that anything can happen in a one-off game. Yeah, you've lifted the Scottish Cup as a captain, <clears throat> how important do you think Scott Brown is to Celtic and, and, and their bid to try and snatch the treble? I think having uh, looked at the situation, I think it's, it's vitally important. Um, he is 
the, the manager will have looked at the situation as well and both would have just come to the decision if we if we look at this and appeal it um, at the end of the day you'll be able to play and you just need to accept what's going to happen afterwards yeah. um, so I think they've looked at it and said vitally important yeah okay um, Robbie yesterday Alex McLeish mentioned the fact that all the pressure is on Rangers today Alan Stubbs says all the pressure in the other match is on Aberdeen well, Aberdeen obviously second in the league, you know, Hibs coming from a lower division and going in there. I think uh, the Aberdeen supporters expect, you know, an Aberdeen team to, to be in cup finals. Uh, and that is a wee bit of pressure, you know, when you get into these games. But the, the biggest thing for me is Aberdeen have come down to Glasgow and particularly Hamden. And for some unknown reason, their experienced players just haven't turned it on. And that's what Derek will be trying to do, he'll be trying to reassure them that uh, another final's on the cards and they certainly have got the players if they all turn up but I, I think Hibs will have something to say about that. Yeah, and talking of cup finals, uh, I might as well just remind you about tomorrow uh, because we have the uh, Glasgow Cup final, the under-17s of Celtic and Rangers will be locking horns at Fair Hill. Ruffy will be joining me there with Gordon Smith to bring you the full match. Hopefully you will join us for that from 6.30, the Glasgow Cup final. Really looking forward to it tomorrow tomorrow on STV um, and we've had a few live events uh, on STV especially the Homeless World Cup as I mentioned at the start of the programme Ali it was absolutely magnificent this time around um, we're off to Oslo we still haven't told the boss yet we're trying to get him to send us <laughs> out there to, to Oslo because yep. we thoroughly enjoyed the last one yep. um, of course you've got to manage Scotland again so the, the merry-go-round kicks off again Yes, another year, a year on, and uh, looking forward to it. We're uh, in the middle of our uh, start of the process of selecting a team. We've had one or two trials, and we're looking to try to uh, get the, as many players from all over Scotland, um, making awareness of uh, to different organisations, individuals, to see uh, where we can find one or two players, and hopefully we can get a, a good team uh, similar to last year and. and, and uh, really show that, that they given the opportunity it's a way of kick-starting their life again if they're selected. Yeah, uh, that was one of the, the abiding memories for me, the, the amount of players that we were interviewing <coughs> from any country. Um, you know, the football was lovely, it was great to see them get involved in the sport and the, the people of uh, Glasgow and beyond all supporting the event. But there were stories to tell, some of them harrowing stories, but hopefully at the end of it, a, an uplifting one. Yes, and uh, when you you know more than 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 most people that, that when you're sat down and they're, they're asking somebody to tell what's happened in their life, and and sometimes it might be the first or second time of actually telling it the, their life story, it's very very difficult. But um, to hear some of them um, and to for them to be at least in a showcasing a little bit of a, the positive side of their life it is very very important I think um, we've had a number of players coming through our, our uh, the team itself and we work with uh, with street soccer and it's it's it's, it's harrowing. It really is. It's, it's, it's uh, when you hear and think about it in this day and age that they're, they're, they might not be have a bed to actually sleep in and, and you walk through Glasgow as well, you, you see it more and more. It's very, very depressing at times, um, but when you get a little bit of a lift and you see the, the change in some of the, the, the boys and girls uh, that take part in the Homeless World Cup, um, for that eight days, this is their highlight and we want to make it as, as, as you know, as bright and as uh, supporting every, every aspect of it as, as we can. What's the criteria for you as a Scotland manager for selecting players? Um, first of all, enjoyment of football. Um, you know, it's not just all about being the best players that we can select from. We want to try to bring the, 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 the people that, that will work together and work as a team and work hard together. Um, there's no use one or two thinking that it's, it's just they're, they're there for a a trip abroad or whatever. Um, we have to really select players that, that want to work hard and and look at the next stages in their life. Um, some might not be at the point of, that they want to make the change or are able to make the change. Um, so therefore, taking somebody at that point would probably be a, a, 
uh, a detrimental effect on the, on their life at the, when they come back from it. So we want to make sure we can select somebody who's ready to uh, take a step forward, um, look at what's next for them, just by simply volunteering with ourselves or other organisations and getting that feeling of purpose and, and, and of want and, and, and respect more than anything. Yeah, well, um, we wish you well in your search for the players. If you want to get in contact with us at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy, if you knew, know someone who might need a helping hand and who might want to um, get on the programme with Ali, we will certainly put you in touch with them. Uh, Ruffy, just before we go, I felt sorry for Bayern Munich uh, last mm -hmm. night. Real Madrid uh, knocked them out. Um, Leicester, I didn't feel any pity whatsoever for because some of the players were just involved in skullduggery as far as I'm concerned so they were knocked out um, can Barcelona pull off the miracle? Uh, as I said already it depends on the officials you know how strong the officials are in this game I've still not got over the last one but uh, I think if you were trying to regroup against uh, a UV strong defence excellent goalkeeper not for me. OK, then. Um, as you can imagine, I'm going to text Ruffy throughout uh, the game just in case Barcelona do indeed uh, pull off that great miracle. Um, great to have Ali Dawson, the former Rangers player, with us talking street soccer. We'll put you in touch if you need to contact him. From Ali, from Ruffy and myself, good night.